Mexico. Our and our Judea is Cook County. Right. And our Samaria is the state of Illinois. Right. And the uttermost parts of the earth, well, that would be our country and then our continent and then so on. Yes. Well, that, but that's not what Scripture says. First of all, none of those guys were from Jerusalem. They were all from Galilee. That's right. So their mm -hmm. hometown was never Jerusalem. So Amen. it can't be your hometown. That's right. Scripture. Just that's want to a point good, that out. That's they a were good all point. Galileans. That is. That's right. Disciples. Because all those disciples were Galileans. So how, if they were to take take that co uh, portion of the commission mm -hmm. to mean that, right. then they would all have to go back to Galilee. Right. They would have to start up there in Galilee, which right. would have been against the commandment Jesus Christ. Right. He which, wanted Jerusalem right. to be and, saved. And first. twice. It's so important that he mentions it twice. Mm -hmm. There in Luke 24, I think it's verse 44 or 45, somewhere around there, and in Acts chapter 1, I yeah. think it's verse 8. Yeah. Anyway, the thing that we want to look at is now the segment that is found in John, but we're going to get over in John in a minute. Okay. But you know, the, I want to point this out while we're here in Matthew, and that is the only church that dares to deal with John's segment is the Catholic Church. Right. About, All, about remit, remitting sins. Right. And, and know, retaining, retaining sins. Retaining sins. Right. And, right. and right. that's the Catholic, the Catholic Church is the only one that dares touch on that. Every Protestant denomination avoids that segment yeah, like the plague. It. They avoid it. Yeah, sure. They, because they can't answer it. No. There's the Lord. He's given them the authority to forgive and not to forgive. Yes, and we're going to see that. It, and we're going to see, we're going to see how this, how this verse, how these verses in Matthew 16 ties in with that commission. Amen. Okay, right. Matthew 16, and let's see, where am I? Uh, I know it's in verse 17. Yes, there we go. All right, okay, here we go. Okay. Um, Matthew verse chapter 16, and we're going to start with verse 17. Now look okay. what our Lord says. He says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, talking to Peter, Simon Peter, that's who he talking to, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, is it, this, this is a very powerful statement. This is. I mean, you know, it's a yeah. statement that it should grab anybody's it's attention. It's a lot there. I yeah. mean, wow, wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to, now, it, now at first glance, when we look at this, it does look like that our Lord is saying to Peter mm -hmm. upon this rock. But mm -hmm. now, the word Peter doesn't, the name Peter doesn't mean rock. Right. It means a stone. So what he's saying here to Peter is saying, uh, thou art Peter, or that is, you're a stone, but upon this rock, pointing to himself. When he says, and upon this rock, he's pointing to himself when he says that, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall prevail against it. Now, now how, how could that be if, if, if it is upon Peter that the Lord is building his church, how it could it be that Peter would be so would be so strong that the gates of hell could not prevail against the church? It's not possible it's because not possible. Satan entered Peter in, in, in an account in the right. Bible. Not only that, in verse 15 and 16, when the Lord says, But who say ye that I am? And Peter got it right. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that was what the Lord responded about. Peter, upon this, that statement that I am the Christ, right. the Son of the living God, we're going to build right. my church. That's right. Mm -hmm. And not only did, does, does, our, not only does, our, uh, does Peter uh, um, uh, forsake our Lord at the time of the crucifixion, mm -hmm. but there's a couple of other times he gets into trouble. Yes. The last mm -hmm. time that's recorded that he gets in trouble is there in Galatians chapter 2 when Paul exactly. withstood him to the face. Exactly. So we're so Peter is just a man. Mm -hmm. There's nothing mystical or mysterious or supernatural about him. Mm -hmm. 
And so when he says that he's going to build his church upon something, he's going to build his church upon something that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. So it would have to be himself. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Remember the parable of, uh, of the... Um, the parable of the man uh, the, uh, who built his house upon a rock yes. and the man who built, built his house, house upon sand. the sand. Mm -hmm. Remember that parable? I think they even have a children's uh, song about that. Mm -hmm. And and the, uh, the, the man who built his house upon the rock, the house stood. Yes. And so yeah. uh, what rock was that? It was a metaphor of something. Yes. Paul even says that rock was Christ. Amen. The rock in the scriptures is a representation of the or type of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Even back on even, even back, back in, in the law. Yeah, in Exodus, that right. rock that followed him, Paul says, was Christ. Amen. I love that. Amen. And mm -hmm. the rock that gave forth the water, the water yeah. that was a type of our Lord. Yes. So when the Lord is speaking about the rock here, he is definitely speaking about himself. I don't think that there is any stretch of the imagination or twisting of the scripture. Here, right. I think it's. I think that we can safely say that the rock is, the Lord, but then he goes on in verse 19 and he says, "And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven." Well, how does that then tie in with the John segment right. of the commission? Well, let's look at John's segment, and it's found in chapter 20. Is it? I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, John, chapter 20. John chapter 20. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm using a new Bible here because my old Bible is falling apart. Yeah. And so, uh, so you know what it's like when you're using the new Bible. Mm -hmm. So anyway, okay, here we go. Now, remember what he says over here in Matthew 16 about the Lord is giving him the keys to the kingdom for a particular purpose. Okay. And that is binding and loosening. Yes. All right, now look at this, what he says. Now the Lord is talking to his 12 disciples, or 11, I should say. Right, Judas is gone. Right, Judas is gone. Is gone. Yeah. So he's talking to his 11 disciples who are going to become the 11 apostles. And this is that same time period that Matthew, Mark, and Luke's segment is given. That is the time period between his ascension Yes and his resurrection. His resurrection and ascension. Okay, yeah. that's, that's, mm -hmm. this is during that same period of time. Okay. And, and whenever he would be talking to his disciples about this commission, he would say, go forth. Go forth. Yeah, okay. see, in, in so many words, he would say, go forth. And, uh, and basically, this is what, look, look what he says here now. Okay. He says in, um, in uh, verse 21, 20, 21. okay, uh, um, John chapter 20, verse 21, it says, then said Jesus to them, again, peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. There's their commission. Go forth. Yes. Okay. Verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Ah, oh, now we're beginning to see how it is that they have such authority. Yes. They're being given the power of the Holy Ghost yes. by the Lord himself. Yes. Remember back in, uh, back in Genesis chapter 1, how that when God created Adam, he breathed on Adam and he became a living soul. Yes, the breath of life. Right, yes. the breath of life. Well, mm -hmm. here is another aspect of that breath of life. When the creator himself breathes on them and gives them the spiritual breath You know, of Brother life. Byrne, that's a great point because John shows our Lord as God. Amen. Shows his deity. So it's beautiful the way he there as God says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Yeah. By breathing. Shows his deity. Amen. You Amen. Know, you see, and it good. goes right back to Genesis. So we can't escape Genesis. No, no matter, no matter where you, Yeah, because there it is. God in the beginning creating man and then breathing Breathe into his nostrils yep. the breath of life. Well, here he's breathing into them spiritual life, spiritual power, yes. spiritual authority, which is the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then he says in verse 23, now notice what he says here, and, and all the Protestant churches run from this verse, but right. only Mother Rome yes. embraces it. Whoso, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained 
unto them. That's powerful. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I see why they run from it. Yeah, That's see? a powerful thing. 